Good day. My name is David Wilde, and this is the third part of a three-part lecture on Chapter 15 on Organizational Structure, Culture, and Design. Let's begin this part of the lecture by talking about organizational culture. Another major influence on how a company structures the various jobs and departments within the organization is the company's organizational culture. Organizational culture is defined as the set of values, norms, attitudes, and beliefs shared by members of an organization, which create the boundaries for good and bad behavior within it. Organizational culture is different than national culture. While the values of national culture are learned at an early age, such as good versus evil, right versus wrong, safety versus danger, organizational culture focuses on organizational issues and practices, such as sales versus service, results versus relationships, and innovation versus efficiency. Learning the corporate culture. For an organization to have a strong culture, the culture's values must be clearly transmitted to new members. Employees can learn or absorb an organization's culture through language and symbols, stories and myths, heroes and legends, and rites and rituals. We'll talk about each of these in the following sections. Organizational language and symbols are just a couple of ways that show how an organization's culture is communicated and displayed. Organizational language is the unique dialect created in a particular organization to communicate with its members. This language not only provides the foundation for communicating cultural values and beliefs, but it also gives members of the organization an identity and a sense of belonging. Organizational language goes way beyond the spoken or written word. It also includes the way organization members dress, how they decorate their workspace, and even how they address one another. A symbol is something that conveys meaning to others. For example, a large corner office may symbolize success. In conjunction with organizational language, you can find out a tremendous amount of information regarding the values of an organization by paying attention to its symbols. Next, stories and myths. Stories are a valuable way for new employees to learn about an organization's culture. Stories are recollections of factual events that are repeated and told, mostly to new employees, to demonstrate the importance of a value. Myths, on the other hand, are stories that have been embellished to a point that they are no longer supported with any factual evidence. These myths are still consistent with the values of the organization, but people are no longer sure whether they are true or not. Heroes and Legends Some stories are considered legends because the time period the story took place in was historic. It usually has to do with the founding of the organization or the actions of an individual or individuals at some turning point in the organization's history. These legends usually describe the actions of a hero whose accomplishments serve as the ideal for upholding the organization's cultural norms and values. These legends are usually about the founder of the company or an important individual who moved the company in a successful direction. One example of this that I will recall is Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx, who at one point in the early days of FedEx flew to Las Vegas to gamble the last few thousand dollars that the company had in order to make payroll. He won, and the company survived and thrived to this day. Rites and rituals. 
Cultural values can usually be identified by observing the rites and rituals that an organization's members must go through. These are activities and ceremonies that celebrate important accomplishments by members of the organization. These special occasions reinforce values in the organization and provide important examples of what the organization actually values. This is also an opportunity for the organization to celebrate its heroes and to reinforce the stories, myths, and legends that pay homage to its history and culture. So, in summary on organizational culture. Organizational culture is the set of values, norms, attitudes, and beliefs shared by members of the organization that contribute to its unique environment. Culture is the unwritten, informal component of the organization that many people use as a guideline for determining acceptable behaviors and it must be transmitted to new members. Finally, employees can learn an organization's culture through language and symbols, stories and myths, heroes and legends, and rites and rituals. Next, let's deal with the types of organizational culture. Using a list of 39 indicators of organizational effectiveness, the researchers Cameron and Quinn came up with two specific dimensions that provide a framework for classifying organizational culture called the Competing Values Framework. You can see the Competing Values Framework in Figure 6, drawn from your text and replicated on the screen for your reference. Organizational cultures could either have an internal focus and integration, or they could have an external focus and differentiation. In addition to these competing values, organizations could value stability and control, or they could prefer flexibility and discretion. These two dimensions have polar opposite values that an organization cannot experience at the same time. As a result, four distinct organizational cultures have been identified based on what quadrant in the framework each occupies. These four distinct cultures are the clan culture, the ad hocracy culture, the market culture, and the hierarchy culture. Let's talk about each of these here. First, clan culture which is internally focused and flexible. The clan culture is a friendly one and built on the idea of collaboration. Employee morale is tantamount to its success. People have a lot in common and the clan culture is very similar to being part of a large family. The organization spends a considerable amount of resources developing employees and putting them in positions to succeed. This type of organization tends to have employees with very long employment tenure and very low turnover. Next, we have the ad hocracy culture, which is externally focused and flexible. The ad hocracy culture values research and development. The creation of new products is rewarded as the working environment is both dynamic and creative. This culture values innovators and risk takers above all others. Third, we have the market culture, which is externally focused and controlling. The market culture is one that is results driven. Employee growth and satisfaction take a back seat to profitability and productivity. Employees tend to be extremely competitive and focused on goals in the market culture. This priority of winning is the glue that holds the organization together. Finally, fourth, we have the hierarchy culture, which is internally focused and controlling. 
the hierarchy culture facilitates a work environment that is both formal and highly structured. Policies and procedures are guiding values of this culture. The focus is on efficiency and cost cutting, keeping the organization running smoothly by creating repetitive routines to find success. And long-term goals include reliability, stability, and efficiency. Now, let's look at actually managing organizational culture. Managing an organization's culture is extremely important. If culture is managed correctly, it can be leveraged as a tool for competitive advantage and create value for stakeholders. A clear, strong culture can play an important role in establishing a positive organizational climate which is poised to take advantage of the opportunities that the business environment provides. If there is no dominant culture, or if there are competing subcultures in the organization, the organization's effectiveness will be compromised. Finally, let's talk about changing culture. Changing an organization's culture is a difficult task. Culture creates values within the organization that are difficult to manage and change. To change an organization's culture usually calls for drastic measures. The importance of managing culture and changing it when necessary cannot be overstated. In addition, understanding the importance of fitting a new culture to the organizational structure is paramount to achieving success. So, in summary on the types of organizational culture, researchers have devised a competing values framework that helps classify organizational culture into four distinct categories, clan culture, adhocracy culture, market culture, and hierarchy culture. The clan culture is built on the idea of collaboration Employee morale is tantamount to its success, and the clan culture is very similar to being part of a large family. This type of organization tends to have employees with very long employment tenure and very low turnover. The adhocracy culture values research and development. The creation of new products is rewarded because the working environment is both dynamic and creative. This culture values innovators and risk takers above all others. An organization with an ad hocracy culture hires individuals who are internally driven and gives them the freedom they need to be successful. The market culture is one that is results driven. Employee growth and satisfaction take a back seat to profitability and productivity. Employees tend to be extremely competitive and focused on goals. The priority of winning is the glue that holds the organization together. Finally, the hierarchy culture facilitates a work environment that is both formal and highly structured. Policies and procedures are guiding values of this culture. The focus is on efficiency and cost cutting. Keeping the organization running smoothly by creating repetitive routines to find success. Long-term goals include reliability, stability, and efficiency. If, excuse me, if organizational culture is managed correctly, it can be leveraged as a tool for competitive advantage and creating value for stakeholders. Changing an organization's culture typically happens when a corporate restructuring occurs, when there is a change in senior management, or as a result of a merger or acquisition. Now, let's take a look at the factors that influence organizational structure. There are specific factors that influence the choice and shape of an organization's structure. Effective managers will design a structure that seeks to promote the organization's strengths while minimizing its weaknesses. 
three factors that influence organizational structure include strategy, technology, and organizational culture. Let's first address strategy and structure. Strategy can be defined as the manipulation of the relationship between an organization and its environment to better achieve the organization's goals and objectives. The relationship between strategy and structure is important in determining the overall effectiveness of the organization. Regardless of an organization's strategy and structure, one important point must be made clear. Effective strategies and an organization's structure are closely related. Some organizations develop their business strategies first and then design an appropriate structure that will help them meet their specific goals. In contrast, other organizations might develop their corporate structure first, based on the type of business they operate, and then determine their business strategies. Management must realize that neither strategy nor structure is cast in stone. They must be diligent about ensuring that structure and strategy go hand in hand in business operations and that they are unafraid to make significant changes to structure and or strategy to maintain or to increase competitive advantage. Next, let's talk about technology and structure. Technology is defined as the combination of skills, knowledge, and materials used to convert inputs into valuable outputs. More than 60 years ago, British management researcher Joan Woodward analyzed the different types of technical complexity that different production processes utilize. Woodward discovered that the higher the technical complexity, the more controllable and predictable the production cycle. She identified three levels of production technology in ascending technical complexity. First, there is small batch unit production, which is utilized by organizations that manufacture customized products or small quantities of products. Next, there are organizations that employ large batch mass production, making large amounts of standardized products. Thirdly and lastly, there are companies utilizing continuous process production that have automated and mechanized most of the mass production process, so production is smooth, efficient, and can be run without interruption. According to Woodward, each of these different technologies affect the design of the organization's structure. As technical complexity increases, the organization gains more levels or grows taller. Organizations that mass produce products tend to have higher levels of formalization and centralization and also tend to employ a mechanistic structure. At the lower levels of te technical complexity, when there is small batch unit production, there is very little standardization of products, low levels of formalization, and decentralized decision-making, the characteristics of an organic structure. Finally, organizational control and structure. An organization's culture and values motivate and coordinate employee behaviors, and if leveraged correctly, they could be a source of competitive advantage. Technologically enhanced work environments create organizational structures where employees are basically given the freedom to foster creativity and solve issues. Work environments where employees create their own schedules, work from home, focus on task completion, and direct their own career paths lead to increased flexibility and a more organic organizational structure. Thus, the organization structure is not only significantly influenced by the organization's culture, it reinforces the culture's value through its design and dimension. So, 
in summary on the factors that influence organizational structure. Three, excuse me, three factors influence organizational structure, strategy, technology, and the company's culture. The relationship between an organization's strategy and structure is an important factor in determining its overall effectiveness and success. Three levels of technical complexity can affect the overall design of an organization's structure. Small batch unit production, which is used to manufacture customized products. Large batch production, which is used to manufacture standardized products. And continuous process production, which is a highly automated approach that is efficient and runs with little interruption. Finally, a company's culture can help motivate and coordinate employee behaviors, and it may in fact provide a source of competitive advantage. And with that, we conclude the three-part lecture on organizational structure, culture, and design, chapter 15 from Connect Master Management 2.0.